him and glorify him. Give him the praise. 15 days of grace. 15 days of answers. 15 days of deliverance. 15 days of intervention. 15 days of release of grace. Release to 15 days of supply. 15 days of favor. 15 days of open heaven. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. I'd like us to pray a prayer before you take your seat. That woman said, for 13 years, they have been on it. And she prayed on the 11th day. You are going to pray. People wonder why. Daniel's prayer was not answered. In Daniel 10 and verse 12, he said, the prince of Pasha stopped me. Now, in, 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 in Isaiah 5, that's the prayer you're going to pray. Isaiah 5 and verse 15. Every main man, every prince of Pasha, every satanic hindrance, every pharaoh figure, every organization, every force known and unknown, hindering my answers, hindering my promotion. Now let me read that scripture. It says, and the main man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. Lift your voice and say, Father, let every main man Every force that's hindering this prayer of 21 days, let them be brought to naught. Whatever is an hindrance to my marriage, hindrance to my fruitfulness, hindrance to my release, on this 15th day, on this 15th day, the Prince of Pasha, I commanded George by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I commanded George in the name of Jesus, I use my authority in Christ. I command every hindrance, every barrier to my promotion, to my enlargement, to my prosperity, to my healing, to all that God has made available for me. I call the main man, the forces that is resisting my answer. I call them brought down, even today, in the name of Jesus. I call them brought down, even today, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is lose in heaven. Every barrier to your answer, we command them destroyed in the name of Jesus. The prayer of Daniel was hindered because it was Old Testament. It didn't have the authority you have. It didn't have the name of Jesus. It didn't have the blood of Jesus. It didn't have the Holy Ghost. But the authority we have, we command the barrier lifted today. Lift lifted today. Answers, answer for you before the end of the 21 days. Put those hands together for Jesus and have your seat. Glory to God. You will stand on this altar to share your testimony. I count it a great privilege to bring us this charge on this 15th day. And I know on this 15th day, somebody is changing level already. You have asked somebody's testimony, they will hear your testimony also. Very quickly, with the time we have, we'll be looking at this charge, why this unending crave for church growth. Why this unending crave for church growth. You may be asking that question in your secret. You may be wondering, after one operation, another operation comes. After one operation, another operation comes. Operation this, operation that. And you have been told already here, this year, before the middle of this year, we will double. If you believe that, let me hear you loudest, amen. You see, when you know the why of anything, it helps you to understand the benefit it takes. It also helps you to understand how to position yourself 
to be an operator so that you can be a beneficiary. Why is the unhand is why is this unending crave for church growth? Somebody may even say, "Look, we have other churches that are not as big as this. Why is it every time we see one more soul to be saved?" According to Scripture, God says He wants all men saved. God wants all men saved. And that's First Timothy two and verse four. He wants all men saved. If I ask you right now, everyone on your street, are they saved? Everyone in your workplace, are they saved? That means we still have work to do. Why is this unending crave for church growth? I'd like us to, to be reminded that we are in the last days. And the last day, churches shall be turned to cities without wall shall be towns without war. According to Zechariah 2, and verse 4, and verse 5, it says, Ron, say to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a town without walls. So this is the vision and the prophecy of the church. It shall be city without wall, without barrier. We must also understand Jesus himself said in John 12 and verse 32, he said, when I be lifted up, I will draw men unto myself. I will draw men unto myself. Jesus has been lifted up. But men must come to himself. That means that scripture must be fulfilled. And on your street, among your neighbors, among your relation, this scripture will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Little flocks shall be turned to the kingdom of Christ on the earth. That means small, small location. Few, few people, they will multiply. That's what it means. In Luke 12 and verse 32, it says, O ye of little flocks, it is your father's desire to give you the kingdom. It is your father's desire to give you the kingdom. And the last time I checked in Revelation, it said the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our son. And God's kingdom is glorified by the multitude of people. Also, we must understand that all prophetic scriptures shall be fulfilled before Christ's return. All prophetic scriptures shall be fulfilled before Christ's return. In Acts 3 and verse 20 to 21, all prophetic scripture shall be fulfilled before Christ's return. It says, and he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive unto until the time of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. God is restoring everything back to the church. One of the words that was spoken in Psalms, Psalm 102, I think verse 16, it says, And the Lord shall appear unto Zion when Zion is built. So God is bringing about the garden of his people before he appears. As we engage in this church growth, you will also grow. In the words of our father, Bishop David Ikoi said, the growth of the church is the glorification of his people. When we talk about church growth, it's not building. It is you. When the church prosper, you are the one prospering. When the church enlarges, you are the one enlarging. When the church is blessed, you are the integral member of the church. That's why I see you in 2024, enlarging on every side. If that is you, let me hear you loudest, amen. amen. Why is this unending crave for church growth? It is the agenda of the end time. We have said that already. In, Mark, in, in, in Isaiah 1, Isaiah 2, verse 1 to verse 3, it says, the church of the end time shall be like the, the mountain shall be exalted above every hill and above every mountain. It says, a man shall flow, nations shall flow. That means, just like we used to have in Rajoba before we moved to Canaan land, you cannot understand how to count people. You will just be seen head and, and oceans of men. That will be repeat in this place. We must also understand that having understanding of the end time puts the believer in command. When we have this understanding that God wants the church to grow, he puts us in command like the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar, 
they knew what to do. According to that, First Chronicle 12 and verse 32, they were in command because they had understanding. When we have understanding of what God wants to do by church growth and how to play our part and how to engage ourselves, we will be in command. That means things will be answering to us. We have had several testimonies of persons going out to reach out and things start changing in the favor. You will be the next testifier this time. We must also understand that the end time church is ordained for continuous growth. That the matern that you gave back to your last born does not mean maternity should close. Hospitals should not close because you've given back to your last child. No. As you are leaving, another person is coming to deliver. That's the same thing. Just like somebody is getting saved now, another person is just being born into the kingdom. That means every day there are men and women that have been saved in order for God to fulfill these words. And we will see more of that in the name of Jesus. In Psalms 2 and verse 8, he said, God wants, he said, ask me of the earth. Ask me of the earth. It will give us the outermost part of the earth for our possession. God wants us to keep placing demand and keep asking as we are engaging to keep asking. God saved our soul. In the words of our, our father, Bishop David Ibo said, Bishop Abio said, don't talk to them about God until you talk to God about them. So we are praying. That's what we have been doing throughout this fasting. But as we are doing that, we move to the next level, reaching out, reaching out. You see, your prayer ripens the fruits. Then you get into the harvest field, the fruit will be dropping. This year, we will have bumper harvest of souls in the name of Jesus. As we round up in this charge, as long as multitude remain in the valley of decision, the church is ordained for continuous growth and expansion. As long as the multitude remain in the valley of decision, many, the church, the church will continue to grow and expand. In Joel 2 and verse 14, Joel 2 and verse 14, there it says, multitude of multitude in the valley of decision. There are so many, they wake up in the morning, they don't know what to do. He wakes up in the morning, between afternoon and morning, he's thinking of suicide. He wakes up in the morning like a normal person. He comes back in the night as if it's not normal. Many wake up, they don't know where to go, what to do. The prince of territorial forces is taking over them. But this year, I see many of them rescued in the name of Jesus. I say I see many of them rescued in the name of Jesus. That is why the church has to grow. In Deuteronomy 1 and verse 11, it says, I will multiply them a thousand times as they are. These are all prophetic scriptures about the church. And that means we will see it answer in this camp in Jesus' name. Being reminded that the growth of the church lies the glorification of of every believer. The growth of the church is the glorification of every believer. And I see you being glorified this season. According to Jeremiah 30 and verse 19, the growth of the church is the glorification. He said, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them. If you are among them, let me hear you loud as amen. amen. And they shall not be few. I will glorify them. The multiplying God is the glorifying God. As we are multiplied in this house, I see you being glorified in the name of Jesus. Wave your hand and declare the same. Father, as I play my part, I see you glorifying our midst. For in the midst, in the multitude of the king, is, of the people is the king honor. Lord, you'll be glorified in this camp this year, in this assembly this year, as we reach out to the lost. As we reach out to the unsaved, as we reach out to men and women, that to be a blessing of salvation to them. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There is no way that is safer than God's presence. Life without Christ is not safe. It says in that Proverbs 18 and verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and is safe. Your place of safety 
in this end time, just like we are seeing the church growing, people getting saved, the darkness will be occupying the world. That's why we want them saved. And you are here tonight, you don't want to be a victim of the end time. Your place of salvation is in Christ. Life without Christ is life full of crisis. I'd like to pray for somebody in this service tonight. You are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I don't want to live my life the way I used to live. I want 2024 to be a different thing for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. That man and that woman, put your right hand on your chest wherever you are, and I will pray with you. Put the right hand on your chest. Now, you can do me one more favor with that right hand on your chest. Stand to your feet and walk right here to the front here. I'd like to pray for that man. I'd like to pray for that woman. Make your way right here tonight. You are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I want, him to, I want to surrender my life to him. I want him to be my God and my salvation. If you're coming, make your way right here. Every other person, go ahead and talk to him. Tell him, Lord, this year, as I mean business with you, in this soul winning drive, show your glorification in my life. Everyone rise to your feet and begin to express yourself to him. Before we partake of the communion, go ahead and talk to him. Lord, let this year, as I determine to drive this agenda, Lord, glorify yourself in my life. Glorify yourself in my business. Glorify yourself in all my affairs. Go ahead and talk to him. Let glorify yourself in my life. Go ahead and talk to him. As I engage, glorify yourself in my life. Glorify yourself in my affairs. As I engage this year, glorify yourself in my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayer. Father, we call this the flesh of Jesus. And we call it the blood of Jesus. It says they took of the Passover and the angel, the destroyer could not destroy them. Whatever is destroying anyone's body here, I command that by this communion, let the destroyer be destroyed. Whatever doctors cannot define and cannot see, be swallowed up by this table tonight in the name of Jesus. By this table, we take the life of Jesus Christ. Everyone that brought their drink and their flesh, we call it the blood of Jesus. And we call it the flesh of Jesus also. Let the life of Jesus be delivered. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be seated as we partake of the same. Hallelujah. You're my healer, you're my keeper, my restorer, my life giver. You are the living God, oh, is there no one like you? You pick me from the mire, like you set my feet on the rock to say, you're my.